Hey guys, welcome back. Are you a medical student or someone who's going to be starting med school soon and wondering what you need to do to make the most of med school to build that future career you see yourself pursue? Well then, this is the video for you. Being on the other side of med school, I am now able to look back and reflect on my med school experience, see what I did right, think about what I could have done better and truly just reflect on all those takeaways from med school. In this video, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. Academics, research, volunteering activities that you take part in, how you can personally grow as you go through med school, and leadership skills that you can pick up and eventually, you know, just having a lot of fun along the way and making great memories. I want to say that medical students are such a big category. We're so diverse. We come from all walks of life, from all corners of the world. So definitely, you know, this is an audience that is pretty massive and very uh, diverse and may vary in a lot of different ways. Um, but I hope, you know, there is a common message as to how we can pursue this journey of medicine and make the most of it, uh, not only for ourselves, for the people around us and for our community at large. And talking about that, I have to say that medicine is one of the most versatile fields one can be in. People graduate from med school to pursue so many different things. People go into clinical practice, they go into research, academics, business, management, you name it. So I think, you know, that level of versatility, no other field offers. And I think, you know, we all should feel honored and lucky to be uh, able to pursue this uh, uh, career in medicine. Not everyone's able uh, to do this. And I think there should be, uh, you know, great respect and honor in everything we do. I want to add by saying that you will be the one to carve your med school journey. Everyone's journey is different, everyone's circumstances are different, and everyone's goals are different. Some people might have been forced into medicine, and some people might actually be very passionate and very interested in pursuing it long term. It's perfectly fine. We're all in this together. And having said that, you know, generally the way med schools are set in, you know, pretty broadly is that you have a preclinical phase and then you have a clinical phase. And truly, you know, the, both of those phases have their own unique kind of qualities, unique experiences that you are able to uh, engage yourself in. And we're going to kind of slowly break down those things in this video and take them piece by piece. And again, this is my experience and I and what I really will be truly connecting back to my experience in med school. As a refresher, I did med school in Saudi Arabia. It's the UK system of med school, which means we don't have pre-med. Uh, it was five years plus one year of internship, which is considered the last year of med school. And we have three years of preclinical, then two years of clinical clerkships, and then that one year of internship, during which we do different rotations and different specialties. You can think of it as like a, a sub-I, a year of sub-I, you know, to kind of equate to the U.S. system in some sense. First of all, for those who have just gotten into med school, congratulations. It's going to be a very memorable journey. You're going to be a student, a learner for life. And I think, again, there's great honor and respect in that. You will continue to grow. You'll continue to build knowledge and skills. And again, you will not find the level of uh, advancements in knowledge uh, in any other field. So having said that, you want to determine early in med school, and it helps to kind of figure that out earlier in med school, what your long-term goal is. What do you want to get out of med school? Where do you see yourself um, after med school? Is there a certain area, a certain stream of uh, work that you see yourself in? You know, a lot of people out there might at the moment be thinking of residency. Some of you guys might be thinking of academics or pursuing a PhD. Uh, or even management and business and, um, you know, so on. So it helps to determine that earlier so you can shape your experiences, you can shape your activities in med school around um, that future career goal. And starting off by talking about academics. Now, that's probably one of the main reasons why you're in med school to 
uh, grow as a physician, as a future physician, grow in knowledge and grow in clinical skills. So the preclinical blocks you're going to be taking, the courses you're going to be taking, again, they will build foundational knowledge that you will then eventually apply in your clinical clerkships, in your clinical years. And I have to emphasize on this, the knowledge you gain in med school will stay with you forever. So the more time, more effort you put into gaining knowledge in med school and more, you know, I'm talking about scientific clinical knowledge, it will stick with you. And you can imagine how, uh, you know, as the next step, you're going to be taking the USMLEs if you're pursuing the US residency or any other clinical uh, licensing exam. And truly, all that that you learned in med school will stick with you even beyond that as a resident, as a fellow, as an attending, and pretty much forever. You continue, you will continue to build on the knowledge that you'll gain in med school. So I think, again, pay attention to that. Do not only study for exams, study to learn, to absorb, and to understand. In addition to your med school exams that you're going to be giving, you'll get a transcript for that at the end of your med school, and, you know, grades... Do they matter? Do they not? Um, what I can say is, for, especially for the U.S. residency, if you're in a U.S. med school, grades are likely going to matter much more um, uh, than if you were an IMG. Um, and I think that seems to be the general scenario because, you know, foreign med schools have very different ways of evaluating and assessing their students. And Programs do understand that there can be a lot of variability. They do not know if there's a standardized way and what certain style or approach uh, certain med schools are using. So in US residency, they generally tend to, um, you know, put less weight on foreign uh, medical school transcripts and grades. But generally speaking, try your best, you know, do your best, try to ace all your med school exams, but most importantly, continue to learn along the way. If you're gonna be pursuing US residency, you'll probably be thinking of doing the USMLEs or the other exams for other countries if you're you know, planning to uh, pursue training there. And you would want to have a plan as to when you want to do those exams, how you can incorporate preparing for those exams as part of your med school study, right? Um, I've seen that the USMLEs generally are a bit more challenging to um, plan because there are multiple uh, exams and uh, each exam has its very unique features, you know, step one being basic sciences, step two CK being more clinically oriented. A lot of people do step one soon after their preclinicals, step two somewhere in their clinicals or after their clinicals. So that generally seems to be the trend. We'll get into, into all those details in a separate video on the USMLEs. But for now, I want to, you know, keep this aspect of talking about USMLEs pretty brief here. Next up, let's talk about activities and volunteering. What kind of activities do you want to get involved in? You know, as you get into med school, you realize there's so many groups, so many student clubs and committees that you can take part in. But again, I think it helps having a longer term vision. You want to ask yourself, what kind of activities will help me get closer to my future goal, my future career, right? Um, reflecting back on my experience in med school, I was part of uh, the clinical training program where we, you know, would arrange uh, research uh, and clinical training opportunities for med our med students in the U.S. and elsewhere. It was relevant. I was a BLS instructor for our AHA certified BLS training site, which was also quite relevant. I also was part of the quality patient safety program. So as you can see, um, a lot of the activities I personally um, uh, took part in, I felt were pretty relevant to what I want to do in the future. And I uh, kind of built that realization, not in first year, but maybe second or third year when I started narrowing down what kind of activities I would want to be part in. So there are going to be a lot of things you can get involved in. Make sure you prioritize the things that you enjoy that you think will help you grow as a person, will help you build skills that are very relevant for your future. In medicine, skills that we truly value strongly are leadership skills, communication skills, teamwork skills. So whatever activities help you get better at those, these are the activities that you would want to consider. In addition to this, community service. That's one of the activities that are pretty highly valued in medicine. And if they see that you 
you know, kind of volunteered at free health camps. You traveled abroad to underserved populations to take part in health camps there. I think these are kind of skills that and experiences that will be pretty valuable on your CV. Research. Research will be and has become and will continue to become a more important aspect of medical school education. You know, if you look back 10, 20, 30 years, the concept of evidence-based medicine maybe wasn't as evolved, wasn't as concrete. Um, I think at this moment, in this day and age, with the explosion of information and knowledge, medical trainees are expected to do more in the way of academics, in the way of research. So being proficient with research skills, uh, I think is truly like the bare minimum uh, for any physician of the future. So this can help, um, uh, it can be facilitated by your future interests. Do you have any specific areas of interest, any specialties you wanna pursue in the future? You can start getting involved in those, um, say, you know, in projects relevant to those areas. Uh, even if you're not pursuing a residency, if you're going into academics or research, research publications have pretty long uh, reaching uh, impact. When you think of academic positions as a physician, as a faculty at a university, research output is one of the um, factors taken into consideration to see how well you're doing as an academic faculty. So. If you have the track record of publishing before, of being involved scientifically in research, I think it definitely adds a lot of value to, to your uh, CV. And it also stands true for residency. Research has become more and more important and any medical student, medical trainee is expected to be taking part in research pretty actively. Now, many of you may ask, how do I get research? I'll again keep it very brief because I've spoken about research in a different video. Reach out to your seniors, reach out to your alumni, reach out to your faculty, and they quite likely will have projects going on. Reach out to them. Networking is key. In medicine, in med school, networking will help you a lot. So try to reach out. If you don't have LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn, make a profile and start building it. Start adding your achievements, start connecting with people in the area of your interest, and just reach out. People have projects going on, they just need people to help them work on those so i'm pretty sure there are projects going on in your med school in your hospital just reach out to your seniors and your faculty another aspect of med school i want to talk about and again another way that can help you further build an interest in your future goals and help you work towards those is joining professional societies and associations the ifmsa the international federation of medical students association that doesn't sound right, but IFMSA, uh, that's one such organization. Even ACC, the American College of Cardiology, has a section for med students. ACP likely does, and all those other organizations, someone's interested in neurology, look at the Neurology Association and see what they have for med students. And you'll be surprised to find out the number of volunteering opportunities available through these societies. This includes you know, taking part in advocacy, taking part in um, their social media, posting for their social media, um, volunteering at their events and so on. So this can be pretty valuable experience, especially if you wanna express interest towards a certain specialty or a certain um, area. An important aspect of med school is gonna be having fun, believe it or not, you know, throughout this whole process. And this process of learning, exams, hard work is not going to stop after med school. You're gonna be in residency, which will be pretty uh, busy. You'll be in fellowship training possibly. You might be eventually working as an attending or any other area that you take on as a future career. There'll always be stress, there's all, there'll always be hard work. Nothing is without hard work. So the, the habits that you build in med school early on you will likely carry them throughout your career going forward. And these habits include um, self-care habits, leisurely habits. So give yourself time, enjoy, do things you love, because when you're working so hard, you're gonna be needing things to, you know, um, spend time on when you're not working, when you're relaxing. And believe me, that's equally important. Spend time with your family, spend time with your friends, 
make great memories, do things you enjoy, do things you love. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, stick to their hobbies, some like painting, some like drawing, dancing, singing, and all those things. So do not neglect that aspect of who you are as a person. And keep in mind that a lot of those hobbies, a lot of those passions truly define who you are as a person and are an important element of your personality. And people like seeing that, you know, as you go, uh, as you progress in your career, um, you'll be interviewed in, in a lot of different stages. And this is something that would come up, you know, it shows um, what a person's like based on their interests, based on their hobbies and based on their passions. So do not neglect this side of you. Lastly, I just want to say that, you know, at the end of the day, you may be able to succeed on your grades, get great Yosemite scores, do a lot of research, get publications, volunteering, all that, you know, put together a pretty hefty CV. But at the end of the day, keep in mind, if you've not grown and improved as a person, all that I think is not of much value. So you want to keep in mind, as you grow in experience, you grow in confidence, you grow in knowledge and skill, you're not growing in ego. And I think that that would be one of the messages uh, I would want you to take away from this. Um, you know, stay grounded and continue to get better as a person. At the end of the day, you're gonna have a family, you're gonna have people around you, your friends, your community who will need you and who will want you to be connected um, always so you know pride ego all these come with you know as our careers grow and progress but i think it is very important to stick to our roots go back and realize where we came from and how much work and um, effort it has taken to uh, get so far and that you have not been alone on this journey it is not just you You've had, your, you've had your family, you've had people who love you, care for you, backing you throughout this journey. So it definitely isn't just you who's come this far. Um, that would be my uh, personal message to you guys. You know, continue being kind, be nice, and continue growing as people. Identify rooms of improvement for yourself. See how you can continue improving. Be open to feedback, you know, be very open to feedback. You will continue to get feedback throughout your career and always be open to improvement. Do not take stuff like that personally. If someone does give you feedback, someone does criticize you in any way, you want to reflect on it and see what um, they meant and how you could apply that, how you could make, of, make use of that advice. Well, guys, I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, I'll see you guys very soon. I hope you liked the video. Again, an overview of you know, how I would have approached med school and what elements of med school I felt uh, stood out for me and in my experience. And I hope you can carve your path to the future career that you see yourself in. And uh, you know, I think it's just a blessing to be in med school. You have so many resources. You have access to a lot of people, a lot of help. Make use of that. Do not you know, doubt yourself when you're thinking of doing something. Just go for it and do it. That would be my advice. A lot of times we think, oh, what if I do that and what would happen? Do not think twice. You know, go for it. Seek opportunities. Continue to grow. And I'll see you guys very soon. Take care.